the Toyota Supra is a cool car. You can see what we did there. But it's true even on the morning after the coldest night for two decades, where roads are thick with salt and the only running water is from a burst water main. Crisp then and clear. Words for the weather, but which you could also use to describe the Supra's three-litre six-cylinder engine, except that, well, this doesn't have one. The clues, such as they are, are 10mm smaller tailpipes and 18 rather than 19-inch alloy wheels. That tells you that this is a 2-litre four-cylinder Supra, which means several things. Power is down to 254 horsepower rather than 335, while the price is lower too, 45 grand rather than 53 in the UK. But when you talk to industry engineers, they'll often tell you that the most fun car to drive in a range is the lightest one. And that big gap in front of the axle line under the bonnet here tells you that weight has been removed, 100 kilos of it. So the 2-litre Supra weighs under 1,400 kilos rather than 1,500. How much cooler, or otherwise, is it to drive, though? Check it out. Well, no such worries about the cold from the inside of this BM uh, Toyota. Now, as you will know, the Supra was developed alongside uh, BMW's uh, sports car for the reason that Toyota made the GT86 um, alongside Subaru and the BRZ. Sharing platforms and sharing costs, sharing quite a lot of interior in this case, meant that it could afford to do so and make money from the sports car project. However, the BMW Z4 and the Supra are not so dissimilar in layout that it feels weird for the Supra to be like this. Uh, I've got a long bonnet in front, of which there is now quite a lot of space in front of a four-cylinder rather than six-cylinder engine. Sit quite near the back axle. It's a two-seat, cosy roofed coupe with nice little sort of uh, crash helmet accepting bulges just here and there should you want to use the car on track. But I don't know that this is naturally, intrinsically a track focused sort of car. It is a long bonnet, relaxed GT car. And that translates very well to having something really smooth, like a straight six cylinder engine of three liters and strong performance. Does that really translate to having Still quite a strong performing, but a two-litre four-cylinder car. Well, the thing about a GT car is that they tend to sound rather good, don't they? I mean, it's not a bad sounding four, but it doesn't exactly sound like a six, does it? And I think that is, to be honest, a bit of an issue in this car. It's not that it's slow, it's not that it's poor of performance, but it doesn't really sound like a car like this ought to sound. There is one other thing to note in that losing that weight, I'm not sure the brake pedal has been recalibrated to suit it and it feels really over servoed. It's really hard to just get that braking just right. I think it's a real oversight actually because it affects you all the time, particularly around town. It just needs more firmness in the pedal because it's really really too easy to just brake too hard or brake too little and you just can't modulate it properly. It's quite frustrating, quite surprising and quite frustrating. But is there the flip side? Does it improve drastically the handling because it's, don't forget, it's got all of that length at the front where there is air where there would previously have been overhanging engine and also some other ancillaries and things like that that would make up that entire 100 kilo difference between the two cars. Well, a bit, but not sparkling amounts. I mean, this still feels like a long nose sit at the back GT car, and when you turn, sure, it turns, and I think there's probably a little bit more dynamism and agility there than there was before. And the steering's quick, it's just literally just over two turns between locks. But it's not nervous, and the car's responses are not super, super agile. I think, yes, it is a bit more agile than it was, but not transformatively so. What it does mean is that the car is a little more economical on the official drive cycle. I've been driving it round most of the day and I'm getting about 33 to the gallon. I don't think you'd get that in the six. But does it matter? Does this feel a bit like you're buying a four-cylinder Mustang rather than a V8? 
there is something six cylinder-ish about the idea of a Supra, isn't there? What it does have, and of course what it shares with the Supra and uh, quite a lot of BMW, is great ergonomics, really good seats, a great driving position, proper sort of laid back, slung, low slung, you can pull the wheel out a long way towards you. It's automatic only, and that automatic gearbox, if left in auto mode, can sometimes just lug things out a bit rather than changing down too quickly. But you can change gear yourself, and it's very good if you do. Lighter, cheaper and less powerful than the 3 litre, then the 2 litre Supra is more nimble than its 6 cylinder alternative, but not by enough to challenge its most agile alternatives. It remains a sporting Grand Tourer, a traditional Supra in the best, quite muscly sense. And given that's the case, for us, 6 cylinders suits it better. Yeah.